I want to welcome you to our Christmas Eve candlelight Zoom worship service tonight and express my hope and prayer that God's Spirit will move in our midst through computers and screens and help us draw close to the living God. During Zoom worship, as always, we ask that everybody remain muted unless you're a leader in speaking. We ask everybody to share your video, but it is optional. We just want to see your smiling faces. This will be recorded and posted on the church's YouTube channel. And we encourage you to use the chat function to ask questions, express prayer and love and appreciation to one another and to God, and also to please extend grace, because this will not be perfect. I invite you now to prepare your hearts and minds by listening to the prelude. Thank you, Beverly. Beautiful. I invite you now to prepare the way of the Lord as you watch and listen to our call to worship from our virtual choir. Prepare the way of the Lord. Prepare the way of the Lord. And all the people will see the salvation of guitar and putting that wonderful video together. Tonight we hear again the story of Jesus' birth in scripture and song. We yearn to see the scene played out, to hear the music of the angels, to feel the rush to the manger, to see what the star that pierces the night sky proclaims. We want to believe the good news of God's messengers 
do not be afraid. For unto us a child is born who brings light into the world. Tonight we're all gathering in our homes, mine included. So the background you see tonight won't be something at the church, but my living room and our tree that we cut down with the Casanovas and the Planas earlier this month, as well as a couple of Libby's and my stockings hanging up there. We have over the last four weeks been remembering that we can believe even when. So tonight I thought we would use our Advent wreath and remember to believe even when. We can believe in the sun even when it's not shining. We can believe in love, even when we don't feel it. We can believe in God, even when God is silent. And we can believe in peace. even when peace is absent. Tonight we gather to believe in the presence of Emmanuel, God with us. Tonight we celebrate the holy coming in human form. Tonight we celebrate God's light coming into the world. to light up our lives, to shine in the darkness, knowing that the darkness can never overcome it. I invite you now to join with me in our Advent wreath prayer. Let us pray together. Holy One, we thank you for the glimpse of heaven on earth in the faces and light of those around us. Even in the midst of fear, of challenge, of struggle, even when our view is obscured by clouds of doubt, you ignite the flames of hope, love, joy, and peace. Let us glow with your brilliance from the inside out. Amen. I invite you to join with James and Susanna and sing our first carol, O Come All You Faithful. The words will be on your screen.
Thank you, Susanna. Thank you, James. Thank you, Beverly. Our first reading tonight comes from Isaiah the prophet, chapter 9, verses 2 through 7. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness on them, light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. Mm -hmm. They rejoice before you as with That's joy amazing. at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulder and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually. And there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness. From this time onward and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Thank you. Thank you. I invite you to and sing along to our next carol, O Holy Night. James, thank you, Susanna. Our next reading comes from Luke's story of the Nativity. Listen to what the Spirit is saying to you and the church. Luke 2, 1 through 7. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus 
that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Thank you. Our next case, a familiar one, Away in the Manger. Thank you, Laura. The story of the Nativity in Luke continues. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth among those whom he favored. Well, let's join with the shepherds and the angels and sing, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Mm -hmm. Joyful of the nations rise, joy. 
Jeff. And our reading of the Nativity story in Luke continues. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Thank you, Thank you. Tessa and Camilla for sharing Luke's story with us tonight. Our next carol, A Little Town of Bethlehem. Please join Shannon and sing along.
Thank you, Shannon. I have a story I want to share with you tonight on Christmas Eve, so let me stop screen sharing if you'd like to. Put it on speaker view, you can, but you don't have to. The story tonight is called The Piano Man's Christmas. The old, piano, the old piano man ran his fingers up and down the keys in a blues tune and sang a few sad notes to himself. It was Christmas Eve and business had been slow all afternoon. A lone straggler put his glass down on the bar and waved a half-hearted goodbye to the manager. A melancholy calm settled over the room. Amos let the number fade off into a soft, heartbreaking minor key. Then he looked back over his shoulder to see if anyone was still around. Go ahead and take off, Amos, the owner said. You're making me homesick with that blue stuff and I don't even have a family to go home to. Remember, we'll be closed tomorrow. I'll see you the day after. Merry Christmas. Same to you, the piano man said, but his heart wasn't really in it. He picked up a half empty bottle of gin from behind the bar and slipped into the night. Homesick and nobody to go home to. Boss man's a lot like me. Merry Christmas indeed. One whole day to get away from it all. But this old black piano man ain't got much to run away from and nothing much to run away to. He took a deep drink from the bottle and his memories were as bitter as the gin. It hurt to think about it, but some things the old head won't let you forget. He met a good woman one summer in Mobile. Lord, she was a beauty. He played jazz in a little restaurant just off Government Street. They put her on as a waitress, Dinah Lee. She glided between the tables with a six service tray balanced on her shoulder as graceful as a ballet dancer. Never spilled a drop of gumbo or forgot an order. Amos walked her home one night, and before the frost nipped the tender buds of the autumn rose, they were husband and wife. Then he got a piano job at the Admiral Simmies Hotel. Young Amos was moving up in the world, and that was good, because a special mothering look showed up in Dinah's eyes. Already he could see every dollar of his pay raise spend to outfit a nursery. Amos became the proudest papa in all Mobile when he looked into the face of their baby girl. She's an angel, Dinah. Let's make that her name, Angel. And he lifted the infant up in his arms and strutted around the room. Angel, I'm going to write you the prettiest song in any piano man ever played. The old man shuffled down Bourbon Street and took another deep drink from the bottle. Only trouble with the young man, he thought, is that he never holds on to a good thing when he's got it. Folks at the Admiral Hotel started taking to the new jazz tunes he played. Visiting big shots from New York heard him one night and planted the dream of Broadway's bright lights in the star-struck piano man's head. Then somewhere between the dizzy success and the chorus girls who sat on his piano and tickled his chin, Dinah and the little girl slipped out of his life. The old man turned down a side street. A puff of wind blew the clutter of the pavement past his shuffling feet. The damp chill of winter on the Mississippi reached all the way to his bones while the gin did its work. What does an old piano man have to live for? Especially when his arthritis slows his fingers and his bones ache, 
when he's lost the only two people who really loved him and there's nothing at home but an empty room. He walked under the soft lights of a pawn shop window. The coal stove at the back of the store looked inviting, so he eased his way in and down the narrow aisle to the glow, glowing heater. He rubbed his hands and he couldn't miss the counter beside him. Every variety of handgun you could ask for was laid out under the glass. From dull Saturday night specials to spit and polish brand names used by professionals. Amos left the shop with a small gun nestled in the pocket of his woolen jacket. One bullet upstairs and it'd all be over. The pain, the loneliness, the bitter memories. He headed toward his drab flat with a quickened pace. The piano man came to Canal Street and turned towards the shopping district. A small black girl stood in front of a big department store window, wide-eyed at the display of the Christmas story. The decorator spared no expense at creating the display. A marbled pillared inn, an immaculate manger made of finished hardwoods, a crib of solid, polished mahogany. The baby Jesus was an enduring cherub with blonde curls. And all the biblical figures were elegant, white ladies and gentlemen, robed in silk and velvet, every hair on their heads, even the flowing beards combed perfectly in place. Amos watched the child as she stood on tiptoe and pressed her little nose against the glass separating her from the Holy Family. A uniformed doorman for the exclusive store was glaring at her. He rushed up and jerked her around. Get your nose off that window, kid. If I catch you rubbing your greasy face on that glass again, you're gonna get what's coming to you. The old piano man ran to the window and pulled the child away from the doorman's rough grip. Take your grubby hands off of her. A big strong man like you must be real proud of himself. Not just anybody can make a little girl cry. Look at her, scared out of her wits. Don't trifle with me, old man, the doorman said. Get her out of here. Amos lifted the child gently in his arms and walked past the store, but he couldn't spare the insults of the man behind them. Little black rascals are always messing things up. The old man hugged her close. Honey, don't you pay no attention to him. He's nothing but poor white trash. His words brought little consolation to the sobbing child. She kept insisting, I just wanted to see the baby. I know, honey, but I wanted to see the baby. I know you did. She could only say, I just wanted to see the baby. Don't worry, and don't fret that pretty little head no more. Amos looked her in the eyes and promised, I'm gonna show you the baby, Jesus. But first we gotta wipe away those tears. You don't want baby Jesus to see you crying, would you? No, no, she sniffled and rubbed her eyes. No, I didn't think so. So what's your name, honey? Angel, she whispered. Just the sound of the name gave him a pain. And the memory of a long lost face brought tears, but he tried to brush away quickly before the child could see them. He forced himself to say, Angel, honey, I wanna tell you something. That baby Jesus in the window, and the mother and the shepherds, that's not the way they looked. Let me show you how it really was. Let's go in here. He shoved open the door to Woolworths and took the child to the toy section. In one corner at the back of the store, he reached up on a top shelf and pulled down a doll. The face was chocolate brown and there were little black ringlets on the boy doll's head. 
Now you come with me, angel, and I'll show you how it really was the night baby Jesus was born. Amos paid for the doll and led the child out by hand, and they walked back towards old New Orleans. Friends waved the piano man as he came to a small hotel that had seen better days. Loose mortar had made the bricks fall out over the years, leaving jagged holes in the facade. Most of the paint was flaked off the sign. Only the regulars knew the name of the place. A soiled window pane revealed a cramped lobby with a plain desk, a battered upright piano, and two horsehair couches with cracks in the imitation letter. A stained green drab awning, half its tassels gone, hung over the window. What you doing? How you doing, Joseph? The old man called to the sun shoe sign boy on the corner. I'm doing fine, Mr. Amos. I'm just getting ready to put everything away for the night. Well, don't run away yet, Joseph. I need your help with something. And then he yelled through the door of the hotel. Hey, Ruby, anybody here? On the way, a voice echoed from down the hall behind a bundle of soiled sheets and bedspreads. A young woman walked into the lobby, dropped the laundry in a corner and smiled. Come on in, Mr. Piano Man, and play me a tune. I'm ready for a good blues song tonight. Okay, maybe later. But right now, Amos said, I need you to do something for me. Ruby, this is Angel. And I want you to help me tell her about the first Christmas. Me? What do I know about the first Christmas? You just do like I tell you. Hey, Joseph. Let me have that shoe shine stool. Now let's put it right here under the awning. Ruby, you sit there on the stool. And Joseph, you stand by Ruby, kind of like you're protecting her. Now, Angel, let Ruby borrow your doll for a little bit, okay, honey? The child gave up her new toy reluctantly, and Amos placed the boy doll carefully in the crook of the hotel maid's arm. The angel began, when baby Jesus was born, it wasn't in the front of a big great inn with marble columns, and the crib wasn't sitting under a polished mahogany stable. It was in front of a crumbling down hotel, and the stable wasn't much different from this old squeaky awning hanging over the sidewalk. He walked to the pile of laundry and pulled out two sheets. A white, one, a white one and placed it around Ruby's shoulders and then a brown colored spread on Joseph. And they weren't wearing silks and velvets, angels. Mary and Joseph had on plain old cotton clothes like you and me wear. The surprise display on the corner began to attract people going home from little shops the old man was oblivious to their presence as they gathered. And another thing, Angel, that little family in the stable didn't have snow white faces and the baby Jesus wasn't a blue eyed blonde. His skin was olive brown and he had little black curls all over the top of his head. And Joseph was as dark as me when building houses out in the sun. And the mother, Mary, she was a pretty little dark girl, about the color of Ruby here. He looked up at the bystanders forming a semicircle around them and recognized an old friend. Hey, come here, Billy. He stood the man on the left of the two figures under the awning. Oh, and you too, Tony. You kneel over here on the left. Here, Billy, you take this walking cane and hold it in your hand. It'll make a pretty good shepherd's crook. Then he placed threadbare blankets around each of the two men. Now, Angel, he turned to the girl. Billy here works out at the stockyard and Tony unloads cargo on the docks. They're not shepherds, but they work as hard as the shepherds did. And they get worn out and almost give up sometimes like the shepherds did. 
and they need some good tidings, just like those shepherds did. The gathering crowd was catching the mood of the old man's drama. One little girl started singing quietly, go tell it on the mountain. Soon everybody was singing and swaying while Amos talked. Come here, Jesse, he called to a man so feeble he could hardly shuffle. You stand over here on the other side, just at the edge of the awning. He turned back to the child. Now, honey, oh, Jesse's been through a lot. When he was a young man, he got misaccused and whipped with a rope and hung up to die. Only his woman cut him down in time and he didn't die. He's seen a heap of things happen and he knows how sweet it is just to be alive. He's a wise man. That's the kind of folks that came from the East bringing gifts to baby Jesus. Amos formed a makeshift turban around the old man's head with a brightly colored towel and then reached into the crowd for a tall young fellow. Come here, Mac. Let me put this robe on you. He pulled a blue spread from the laundry pile and draped the man's shoulders, then topped his head with another towel. You stand over there, Mac, right beside Jesse. Only I want you to be bending over, looking at the baby. The young man dutifully obliged. Now, Angel, you take Mac here. He's a tall, handsome man. He had a wife and beautiful girl just like you, honey. And everybody here knows how he got, got into fooling around with the bottle and chasing women and his woman picked up with his baby and went away. Then Mike made a turnaround and he went back and begged his woman to come back home. She finally did. And Mackie's got his life all straightened up back in place again. And that's a wise man, Angel. That's what the Bible story means by the wise men. It's not silk and velvet clothes that make a man wise. It's getting smart like Jesse and Mac that makes a man wise. The distant whine of a patrol car sounded down the street. The siren grew in, grew in intensity, but the old man was too engrossed to notice until a giant sized police officer rolled out of the car door and roared, what's going on here? Break it up, folks. Christmas Eve ain't meant for street fighting. He pushed his way through the crowd and then, and then caught his breath at the figures under the awning. The black police officer took off his hat and mumbled apologies to the old piano man who continued to talk to the little girl as if nothing happened. That's the way it really was, Angel. The manger folks were just like these friends of mine and yours on the, here on the sidewalk. The child walked over to the figures in the live nativity beneath the awning. The crowd picked up the strains of silent night, holy night. She looked up at the wise men, then walked over to the shepherds, finally coming to the holy family. She ran her fingers through the curly black hair of the doll in Ruby's arms. She stood before them, lost in rapture. When she came back to the old man, she turned around to take in the scene again. And Amos whispered, Angel, the baby Jesus is one of us. Don't you ever let anybody make you feel different, honey. He walked the same kind of road we walked. He knew what it was like to be made fun of and to be hurt and to be treated like he was dirt under the feet of big folk in the city. But God took care of all that. From now on, honey, wherever you go, you just remember that he's walking right there with you and there ain't nothing the two of you can't handle. Suddenly, the big black police officer started singing, sweet little Jesus boy. 
and up and down the streets, other singers echoed the refrain. Sweet little holy child, we didn't know it was you. And for a moment, just for a moment, it was as if time had rolled back and the streets of New Orleans became the cobblestone village of Bethlehem. After a while, the old man said to the child, Angel, honey, your mama's probably worried about you. Can I walk you home? Let me, the patrol man volunteered. And Amos caught the wide-eyed wonder on the child's face at so many surprises in one night. Ruby handed Amos the baby doll and he bent over to place it in Angel's arms. When he did, she reached for the old man's neck and hugged him as tight as her small arms could squeeze. Then she kissed his cheek and said, I love you, Mr. Piano Man. He watched her drive away in the patrol car, the siren going full force. When he turned back to the live nativity, the crowd was dispersing and his friends were handing the sheets and towels and blankets back to Ruby. Thank you, Amos said, with a kind of reverence still hanging in the air. They all silently gripped his hand and patted him on the shoulder and then went their separate ways. The old piano man stood alone under the awning. And for the first time in a long time, Amos felt he had really experienced Christmas. He slipped his hand into his coat pocket and felt the gun and decided it was time to get rid of it. So he walked back to the pawn shop and sold it for a loss. And then he began to make his way home fingering the notes to sweet little Jesus boy on an imaginary keyboard. Amen. I invite you now to gather yourself on this holy night to sit in silence, to let Luke's story resonate in you, to let the story of the old piano man's Christmas resonate as well, to see if you can hear the angels sing and see the shepherds making their way to the stable to offer yourself back to God and to help you begin to meditate in silence. I invite you to listen and sing along with the stillness song that we've been using for Advent. Bye. 
my deep still pools of quietness, the dwelling place of God. Meet me in the stillness, Lord. Be the air I breathe. Meet me in the stillness, Lord. Free me to receive. Oh, take me to Let's take a moment and meet God in the stillness, in the quiet, in the silence, and offer ourselves to God this night. Amen. I invite you now to share the light of Christ. I invite you to turn off all the lights in whatever space you're gathered in and have your candle lit or prepare it to be lit. I'm going to stop sharing so we can see one another. So I invite you to go turn off your lights and have your candle light ready. I'll give everybody a second to get their room dark and get their candle. We come to this cherished moment every Christmas Eve when we light our candles and sing Silent Night. Maybe you're like me and wondering if we can recreate some sense of normalcy on Zoom. Maybe you're like me and wonder if you'll feel the joy that you usually feel this night, especially with so much loss 
so much death, so much sadness, so much change to the hear. Will the light and song elude us? I think not, because we are here and we can light our candles at home and we can sing our song just like those soldiers did in World War II and World War I across enemy lines. When everything stopped for a while and the message was all is calm and all is bright. When light prevailed against the violence and darkness of the world. We've been sorely divided by so many things this year. We have been devastated by so much loss. Many of us are tired and anything but calm. But in this moment, this night, we remember that we are not alone. And we believe God's music and light can and does come again and again and again shining a light so there's hope for tomorrow, shining a light so that love works for a more equitable world, shining a light so that joy wells up from the deep places within us, shining a light so that peace has the assurance that we so desperately need. If you haven't yet done it, I invite you to light your Christ candle. And we can practice sharing by simply putting the candle out of your frame to the person to your left or right and they tilt theirs over and we can share light with each other. Glenn, I'll come over to you. So you tilt yours my way, Glenn over to your right. There you go. Keep going till it's out of frame. All right. Sharing the light of Christ with one another. Well, hold on to your candle and your light and let's join Shannon and sing Silent Night together. Let me go back to screen sharing. Oh, 
Amen. Thank you, Shannon. I want to thank Shannon and Jeff and Laura and James and Susanna and Beverly for all their hard work and making tonight possible. The music, James working on the videos and getting the words on it for us. We are truly blessed by such great worship. Hear now this benediction. God did not wait till the world was ready, till nations were at peace. God came when the heavens were unsteady and the prisoners cried for release. God did not wait for the perfect time. God came when the need was deep and great. God dined with sinners in all their grime, turned water into wine. God did not wait till hearts were pure. In joy, God came to a tarnished world of sin and doubt, to a world like ours of anguish, shame. God came, and God's light would not go out. God came to a world which did not mesh, to heal its tangles, shield its scorn. In the mysteries of the word made flesh, the maker of the stars were bo was born. We cannot wait till the world is sane, to raise our songs with joyful voice or to share our grief or touch our pain. God came and comes with love. So rejoice, rejoice. Amen. I invite you now to listen to the proslude and prepare yourself to go out and share God's light and love in this Christmas season. Amen. Thank you, Beverly. May you and yours have a blessed Christmas. Let me stop screen sharing so we can visit and share with one another if you'd like. <laughs>